Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about aneurysm. An aneurysm is a localized abnormal dilation of blood vessel or the heart that can be congenital or acquired. It can occur in arteries or veins and is often caused by a weakening of the vessel wall. Aneurysm can develop in various parts of the body including the brain. We call it cerebral aneurysm. It may be in the large cerebral arteries, may be in the circle of willis, small size berry aneurysm or in the aorta we will get aortic aneurysm usually very large and any other arteries. The severity and risk associated with an aneurysm depends on its size, location and the health of the affected blood vessel. Small aneurysm may not cause noticeable symptom and can go unnoticed. However, larger aneurysms pose a serious risk of rupture which can lead to internal bleeding and potentially life-threatening consequences. When an aneurysm involves all the layers of an intact but attenuated arterial wall or the thinned ventricular wall of the heart, it is called a true aneurysm. Atherosclerotic and congenital vascular aneurysms and ventricular aneurysms that follow transmural myocardial infarction are examples of true aneurysm. A false aneurysm, also called pseudoaneurysm, is a defect in the vascular wall leading to an extravascular hematoma, that is collection of blood, that freely communicates with the intravascular space causing pulsating hematoma and the blood clot may extend to the main blood vessel and may block the blood vessel, may close the other major branches of the main arteries also, that is also possible. Examples include ventricular rupture after myocardial infarction that is contained by a pericardial adhesion or a leak at the sutured junction of a vascular graft with a natural artery. So the difference is that a true aneurysm involves all the layers of an intact arterial wall, false aneurysm, defect in the vascular wall and extravascular hematoma, leaking out of blood, freely communicate with the intravascular space. Secular aneurysm, fusiform aneurysm and aortic dissection. Aneurysms are classified by macroscopic shape and size. Secular aneurysm essentially is spherical outpouching involving only a portion of the vessel wall. In intracranial vessel, they generally measure 2 to 20 millimeter. However, in the aorta, they range from 5 to 10 centimeter in diameter and often contain thrombus. Fusiform aneurysm involves diffuse circumferential dilation of a long vascular segment. They vary in diameter in the aorta, generally from 5 to 10 cm, and can involve extensive portion of the aortic arch, abdominal aorta, or even the iliac arteries. An arterial dissection arises when blood enters the defect in the arterial wall and it is mostly seen in the aorta, maybe the ascending aorta, arch of aorta, descending thoracic aorta or in the abdominal aorta and tunnels through the medial or medial adventitial plane. Dissections are often but not always aneurysmal. It may not be associated with aneurysm. Aortic dissection is the classic example. Types of aneurysm. This is normal blood vessel, three layer, tunica intima, tunica media, tunica adventitia. This is a secular aneurysm, one side abnormal dil dil dilation, 
is true aneurysm fusiform. This is also true because all the layers are involved. Here it is both side, entire circular circle of the blood vessel is in fusiform shape aneurysm. Here false aneurysm, there is a leak and there is extra vascular connective tissue that is leaking, that is sealing the leakage blood vessel. This is the hematoma. Okay. Here is the dissection that separates the tunica media from tunica intima or may go among inside the tunica media. Okay. That is dissection. This usually associated with aneurysm may not be associated with aneurysm. Common location of the aneurysm is risk factor, cerebral aneurysm affect blood vessel in the brain. Rupture can cause hemorrhagic stroke like lenticular straight artery aneurysm rupture like that of the berry aneurysm at the circle of Willis rupture that may lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage. So it may lead to stroke and also may lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage depending on the situation. Aortic aneurysm affects the aorta main blood vessel that carries blood from the heart to the rest of the body. Aortic aneurysm can occur in the chest, thoracic aortic aneurysm or the abdomen, abdomen, abdominal aortic aneurysm. It may be the ascending aorta, arch of aorta, descending thoracic aorta, abdominal aorta, even the major branches of the abdominal aorta that aneurysm may extend. Usually location between the renal artery and the bifurcation of the aorta. Peripheral aneurysm affects blood vessels outside the heart and brain such as those in the legs, popliteal aneurysm, artery behind the back of the knee, we have popliteal artery that may go through aneurysm or maybe any artery in the arm like that of the brachial artery or axillary artery. The exceda. Risk factor for developing an aneurysm include AIDS. As the AIDS advances, more chance to get atherosclerotic aneurysm, family history, high blood pressure, smoking, and certain genetic conditions like LR Danlos syndrome or Marfan syndrome. Pathogenesis of aneurysm. The process of aneurysm formation is complex, multifactorial, often involving combination of genetic, environmental, and hemodynamic factors. Here are the key steps in the pathogenesis of aneurysm, structural weakness, genetic factor. Some individual may have a genetic predisposition to condition that affects the strength and integrity of the arterial walls, genetic disorders such as Marfan syndrome. LR Danlos syndrome and familial thoracic aortic aneurysm and dissecting syndrome and dissection syndrome can increase the risk of aneurysm formation. Connective tissue disorder condition that affects connective tissue including collagen and elastin can weaken the arterial wall. Connective tissue disorder associated with increased risk of aneurysm development. In case of Ehlers Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome, this also causes defective connective tissue that can lead to aneurysm formation. Inflammatory processes, chronic inflammation can contribute to the degradation of the arterial wall. Inflammatory cell and mediators may lead to the breakdown of structural protein, promoting weakening and dilation. Inflammatory response may be triggered by conditions such as atherosclerosis, infection like that of the tertiary syphilis or any other organ, mycotic organism, maybe even some fungus may lead to aneurysm. Not only syphilis, other bacterial, bacterial infection, the arterial wall may lead to aneurysm. Fungus may lead to aneurysm or autoimmune disease may lead to aneurysm. Atherosclerosis is the buildup of cholesterol, fat and other substances in the arterial wall 
can contribute to the weakening of the vessel and the formation of aneurysms. Atherosclerotic change can lead to inflammation and degeneration of the arterial wall, creating a predisposition for aneurysm development. Hemodynamic stress, chronic exposure to abnormal hemodynamic forces such as high blood pressure, turbulent blood flow and shear stress can contribute to the development and progression of aneurysms. Arterial arteries subject to sustained pressure are more prone to dilation and structural changes. So a person with hypertension has more chance to have aneurysm. Trauma, physical trauma such as injury or surgery can weaken the arterial wall and predispose it to the formation of an aneurysm. Even catheterization may lead to aneurysm. Trauma induced aneurysm may occur in specific location where the vessel has been damaged like road traffic accident. Okay. Inherited disorder, inherited condition affecting the structure of the blood vessel such as vascular ehlers danlos syndrome can increase the risk of aneurysm formation. Age and gender aneurysms are more common in the older individual and the risk increases with age. Men are generally at a higher risk of developing aneurysm compared to women. Diagnosis we must go through clinical history. We may get turbulence, bruit, pulse, abnormal pulsation through physical examination, ultrasound, Doppler ultrasound, computed tomographic angiography, CTA, magnetic resonance angiography, MRA, digital subtraction angiography, DSA. We may do this thing also if we, if we have that scope. But these are less important like plain radiography x-rays, echocardiography, okay. So these all are required to diagnose aneurysm. Any, anything like these are more specific, okay. Treatment of aneurysm. Treatment option vary depending on the size, location and type of aneurysm. Small stable aneurysm may be monitored regularly without immediate intervention. You must monitor and must have surveillance. You may take some MRI CT scan periodically or echocardiography, ultrasonography, whatever we like according to the need of the patient. Medication, larger or high risk aneurysm may require surgical repair and vascular procedure to prevent rupture. Regarding medication, we will give antihypertensive drug. We can give beta blockers. Open surgical repair, lifestyle modification, management of underlying conditions like hypertension, high cholesterol level as well as that of the other conditions like connective tissue disorder that should be managed like Ehlers Danlos syndrome and also the Marfan syndrome, we must have surveillance and we must, must have monitoring. And that's all about the aneurysm. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice, wonderful and blessed day. Bye now.